Hey y'all, happy Saturday. Today is what, the beginning of the month, but it's already the 4th. Listen, girl, listen. Wait, hold on. I ain't got nothing to tap with. Hello? Hello? Are you paying attention? Listen. Y'all, I love this. Oh, I love this V-neck I got on. It's from, um... I was gonna say Torrid. No, it's not from Torrid. It's from. Where is it from? Rev Dolls. Okay. Anyway, I always wash my face, but I've been making sure to do my face on camera because people just they just gonna let me have it no matter what. Um. So I'm just like, well, fuck it. Let me just do it on camera. Hey, y'all. Welcome to another video. If you are new, welcome. If you're not new, hey, girl, welcome back. We got good lighting. The quality is a lot better. Somebody gave me a suggestion about, like, something that I could put over the windows to actually help keep the sun out. They were like, girl, the quality is good enough for me. But just in case you didn't know, let me help us sister out. And I'm so grateful for that. Thank you. So listen, welcome to the channel. If you are new, welcome. If you are not new, welcome back. If you have not commented in a while or if you're watching, but I don't know you're here, put something down below. Put a heart emoji down below in the comments just as your way to check in, y'all. Let's let's make that a let's make that a thing, right? We got a lot to talk about today. We're gonna have kind of like a pop a pop how you say it? Pop culture type conversation today because i feel like i have so much that i want to talk about now listen let's talk about what car chats are what we do over here because y'all i'm realizing like let me tell y'all something god is doing a work god is doing a work not only in me but in my business in my life in the youtube channel and his youtube streets god is repositioning me and i'll be honest with you guys it's not comfortable. If anybody has been through a repositioning when it's Jesus involved, he doesn't coddle you. He makes sure you feel it. He makes sure he rules with an iron fist, okay? But I've been realizing some things about my social media, the way things have been going, the way that I've been showing up and being presented, and just a lot of different things. I'm going to get into it this month. Um, I want My goal is to have an episode ready for you guys. Um, I'm doing It's Just Joy over there on the Patreon. If you're already a part of my Patreon, um, some of the key benefits are, number one, typically you travel with me. Right now, I'm putting a pause on travel um, because I got to fill up my own tank. So travel with me was one of the biggest um, points that I was trying to do because I felt like I really wanted to connect with my people. You know, y'all know I love y'all and I always am looking for a way to connect with y'all, but I'm putting a pause on the travel with joy for right now. However, hold on a minute. This person better not be like, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's weird. Somebody just came by my house and then backed up. That big, that's like freaks me out. Anyway, so the big, the next biggest point is the behind the scenes content. So I have lately just been posting a lot of behind the scenes content. So that way when I'm not on YouTube or when you guys are like, where is Joy on social media? And we just want the raw uncut real joy it's just joy no frills no extra it's just me and if you subscribe to that you down for that patreon is the place to be for you it's just me me showing up as my true self kind of taking you guys through what it is that i'm dealing with also you know we what the fuck what are you doing I'm sorry, but that really just like you just backed all the way up in the row and then came back. Excuse me, excuse my language. But that like, what are you doing? That stuff like that really gets me. 
making me want to get the all right now don't get got um but anyway uh another thing is that there is a group chat so um right now i am in a group chat you know every other week getting an opportunity to um interact with the girls because i love y'all man it's it's something you guys there's a lot of you who really who show up and have really been showing up for me not anything else other than just me like me like i'm more than enough you love me you riding with me and i'm just i'm so grateful for that so shout out to all my people in the patreon man i love y'all i always want to give y'all a shout out so anyway moving on um i'm sorry y'all that truck really threw me off i think my um not adhd but yeah my adhd shows up for show in my uh car chats okay car chats this is the place where we come and we speak our mind so if you in the comments moderators please don't block anybody for speaking their mind even if their opinion may not match your opinion or you may not understand where they're coming from just know this is a safe space where we can speak our mind and talk about like what's going on in life so i don't know this is like a safe space for me like i don't know i took car chats away for a little while because i was feeling a certain type of way but then i made the decision like you know what okay as long as the people act right as long as they're not giving me too much or you know stressing me out I'm, we're gonna keep it going now the quality of the like i said the quality of last night's um <sighs> car chat wasn't that great because it started getting late and the lighting and everything like that but anyway this one should be pretty good so let's get into some of the things that i wanted to talk about i'm all over the place today um one of the things that i wanted to talk about is that i address some like bullying on my last channel like on my la last night's video here let me and i talked about how like it really was kind of making me uncomfortable the way we are kind of like here let me find it the acceptance of the bullying like the complacency right so let me find um the comment hold on what is wrong with this phone yeah this is not my phone so you know i'm kind of like trying to find it here we go okay so there's this comment that shout out to mike mike with a, a y y'all make sure y'all um give show mike some love you know what i'm saying because He's over here with us girls, and he never, ever says anything crazy, never says anything disrespectful. He watches all of my videos, even my chaotic coochie videos, which I'd be so embarrassed. But shout out to all the men. There's been some men that have been DMing me um, that are not trying to holler at me. Thank you. They have been really saying some kind, supportive things. So shout out to all the kings that watch my videos. Shout out to all the ladies that make their boyfriends and their husbands watch my videos. I love y'all, too. But anyway, okay, um, Mike, this is Mike's perspective. Mind you, Mike's perspective is different than mine. And I like it when people who may not agree with me po post their opinion, right? Like, I love that. If you don't agree with me, but you know how to remain respectful, to me, that's how you have a really good conversation. I love that. I love when someone like can remain respectful and have a conversation where the the points like the point of views may not be the same but at least we can have a conversation right so i'm gonna read to y'all what mike said i'm gonna try to make it quick mike says i feel that a great change is happening and for the good actually but there is a saying that says love brings up everything unlike itself love brings up everything unlike itself and i feel the reason that might be is because we can't bring the light to the darkness aka paint the world in a pink paint we have to bring the darkness to the light 
darkness being the absence of light or the absence of love is nothingness but it's a nothingness that can inspire destructive creation because people are powerful creators but it's nothingness before what is true and real love aka god what is loveless is the absence of love the absence of light so it needs to be brought before love before light before god but that means that the darkness will have to be revealed and i feel that is what we are experiencing when we bear witness to all of the nonsense love you joy god has got us all so i just want to give a shout out to you to mike like i had to read it a couple of times and i like that y'all know i'm a sagittarius so we like to be challenged intellectually um otherwise we get bored <laughs> this kind of like you know this us so i like it when you have a conversation with me and i have to really read what you say and it helps me to stop and read and listen and pay attention and i said a long time ago i was gonna stop reading the comments but it's not true um i'm gonna keep reading the comments i gotta oh this store here it still hurts and then i also gotta y'all know it's um chaotic coochie day 10 right now or 11 we either on day 10 or 11 but as you can see i'm feeling much better but that's why we're getting a lot more car chats i really want to get into the trial halls i got a, a vlog that i want to post so y'all just bear with me hopefully i'll be able to get that done this next week that's coming up but anyway i find it very interesting that mike says that in order for us to deal with the darkness we have to bring it to the light if we keep the darkness in the dark how can we ever deal with it now he said that as it relates to that last video that i posted where i told y'all i was getting kind of weirded out by by the normality the normalization of bullying like and everyone always likes to use the excuse they're like oh these are just kids it's just the kids these are not adults these are just kids no these are adults i've been in the comment section of a lot of different videos lately because i've been kind of doing some research on a direction that i want to take a certain piece of content so it's kind of put me back at my research and development stage again um and i just want to say this really quick for all of you guys who are watching me who want to be content creators can you put it down below in the comments just so that way i can kind of get a, an idea but i have a piece of advice that something that i just went to a seminar right and y'all know that i had maybe the last two years of my content creator journey because i'm still very new to this um, I actually have met someone who has actually been in the game for 15 years, been on YouTube. I didn't even know, excuse my ignorance, I didn't even know YouTube been around for 15 years, but they've been on YouTube for 15 years. And I am so grateful and blessed to have met them. And the way that they piped my head up, y'all help me to stay organized because i got so much that i want to talk to y'all about i want to talk to y'all about keith lee i want to talk to y'all about fupa power i want to talk to y'all about so much stuff and you can tell when i'm excited to talk about it i tend to forget so keep me on track if i didn't mention something point it out so i can remember to mention it next time but <clears throat> the point i'm trying to make is i got two points i want to make about this person one of the things that they were saying to me is they were basically to y'all here go that white truck again one of the things that he was basically saying <clears throat> Oh, I told my told him myself. This person that I was talking to said to me was that I didn't know the value of what I was doing. Because if I truly knew the value of what I was doing, I wouldn't question it. No matter what anybody else had to say about it. Right? He said it doesn't matter what anybody else has to say about it. The the work that I'm doing, they don't know the difficulty of that it is the work that i'm doing and i can't i don't have time to wait around for them to figure out 
the the value of the work that I'm doing. By then, it'll be too late. Let me just say, let me just say this real quick, y'all. I know y'all know I'm squirrel, squirrel. Y'all know I be off pace, but I just want. I don't know who needs to hear this, but that really changed my life and changed my vision. And I'm so grateful for that person pouring into me like that because that changed the trajectory of me and my content. I'm not gonna get into it right now about what I was thinking, but maybe in the next year. I'll come back and let you guys kind of know. That's why I'm a journal. So that way I can remember to tell you guys. Um, but the place that I was at was not good when it came to creating content. Okay. The place that I was at was not good. But to have somebody pour into me and to tell me, you can't go to somebody. First of all, this is this is this is a separate, this is a segment. You can't go to somebody who does not value who you are and what you do looking for validation about what it is that you're trying to do keep your mouth shut get into your bag do what it is that you're trying to do you're going to make mistakes bad things are going to happen things are going to come to the surface that you did not know was there if i could name this video i think i would call it resurfacing because sometimes things need to come to the light in order for them to be dealt with if they stay in the darkness then you don't know that they need to be dealt with so it was right on point with what mike was saying because i have been there's some things in my life like for example the situation with my dad i'm 35 years old right i don't have daddy issues because i'm indifferent about it right i thought i was indifferent about it until I ended up in a full-fledged meltdown about it that brought that even though that was a dark thing and a dark time it came to the light and it it showed me something that needed to be dealt with now that I know that it's there now I can deal with it now I know how to move if you are a content creator and you are not even a content creator maybe you're a brand you're you want to be a brand maybe you want maybe you want to go to nursing school maybe you want to do something different in your life or move in a different way in your life but you feel like deep down inside i don't know how i can do this or i can't do this or maybe god gave you a promise like he did me see god gave me a promise i don't often talk about that but God gave me a promise as it relates to my purpose. And somewhere along the way, I lost focus. And I was thinking to myself, like, what the hell am I doing this for? Because look at everything that's happening to me. Like, why are these things happening? Why am I going through this? But it's because I have a purpose. And God made a promise. So his promise is still yet to be fulfilled. Independent of whether I feel like, oh, well, it's over. It's over. I can't do this anymore. I'm done. The promise is still yet to be fulfilled. Okay, that's number one. The next thing, okay, when it comes to surfacing darkness and bringing things to the light so that way you know how to move, don't let it overtake you, but let it come to the surface so that way you know how to move. The next thing to that is if you are somebody who has promise, and you have purpose, right? This message ain't for everybody. As you can see, people love to watch my content when they think that Chris is leaving me or treating me real bad. They love the negative. They love a train wreck. But when it comes to impartation or valuing me as an individual, it's not the same, okay? Let me tell you something, though. And this is something that I'm learning. All of these are lessons that... I'm learning in different things that I'm dealing with. One good thing about it is when things come to the surface and when things are out and you're able to deal with them, it also lets you know truly where you stand. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather clarity than confusion any day. Give me clarity. Even if that clarity hurts me, in the long run, I know it's going to help me. When this person came to me and was talking to me about YouTube and about my social media and about what I was doing and 
you know, I was, I basically, you know, they were just, I, I could not believe, first of all, that they even knew who I was. That part was just like, I was, and I'm just going to tell you what a part of the conversation, I was like, you watch me? And they were like, yes, girl, I've been watching you from the beginning. And I'm like, I've been watching you from the beginning. And they like, girl, I love you. And I was like, you know who I am? And you know what they said to me when I said that? They said, do you know who you are? And it made me cry. I started boohoo crying. Anybody who knows me knows I'm not a crier. So if I'm crying, like, there's an issue. Because I'm just not a big crier. That's probably my problem. But when this person said that, they was like, do you know who you are? And I was like... And I'm like, wow, like, damn. And they was like, Joy, you'll be a fool. I'm just, you know, what I was telling them that I was thinking about and just some of the things that I had been dealing with and how I was feeling. And I'm going to say this. When you have a dream or a vision or a passion or a purpose, the first thing that someone will try to do to trick you out of your purpose or your passion is try to convince you of its worthlessness. If something is worthless or junk, people don't need to convince you of it. It's going to come to the surface, right? So if somebody trying to convince you that something doesn't have value, you might be want to look at that a second time. Or if somebody's treating you like you don't have value, even if they're gaslighting you and saying something completely different with their words, move accordingly. Because just move accordingly because people will do that, right? Okay. I just had to say that. Thank Shout out to Mike for making that comment because I just felt like that comment was really deep. And I had to read it a couple of times to really get it. And I'm still, I, I um, screenshotted it and I put it in my archives just so I could remember it. But it was just something about it that just really was like, wow. Now, there was another, okay, let me go. There was another comment that I wanted to talk about. Shout out to Tiffany Jackson. Shout out to, Chan, uh, is it Chanel Godiva 450 or 2450? Um, okay, here's the next thing. I thought this was gonna be this white. Y'all was gonna y'all was gonna see me get into an altercation because I definitely was gonna get real Florida ghetto. Cause I don't know if they do this in other places, but I'm from Florida and it's just certain things you can't do to me. And if I'm sitting on my porch and you keep riding by my house, what's up? What it is, what's up? Like that's a Florida thing, girl. Like I, I really am like, what's up? Like why you keep riding by my house? Like, what's up? You got business here? Like, what? You, what? Can I help you? Y'all, I'm really. I get. In, I have to see God still working on me because I. I get into it like that. Okay, but anyway, here. Let me go to this next thing. Why is this getting? Hold on a minute, y'all. Okay, so there's another person who wrote this. Bada bing. There's a, there is this paper I read about 10 years ago that actually discussed the dangers of tolerance. Remember when I was talking about how I feel like everybody wants you to just ignore everything? And I feel like now that it's this epidemic of just ignore it, just ignore it, just ignore it, just ignore it. Well, what happens when you ignore bad behavior? You create a monster. Now, the age of social media where there was like so much anti-bullying and so much... Because what was happening was there was a lot of young kids and stuff unaliving themselves with that bullying shit. That's why I don't go for it. Like, listen, we'll go to war. I mean, I'm ready. Let's go to war. Let's go to war. I'm, and I know that, especially with me being on my, my cycle and having these extended periods and stuff like that, I don't have the energy. I'm learning that. I, it's not because I don't want to go to war. Because trust me, I'd be ready to go to war about everything. I, if it's something that I really like, that really means something to me, and that is really important to me, not about everything like minuscule things, but if it's something that means a lot to me, I'm ready to go to war about it. And that's just that's just that's what it is. 
Um, I'm going to war. Like, what's like what? Like, what you like? What you trying to say? Like, what's the tea? Like, you know, like that man keep driving by my house. Like, I don't like that. And if I wasn't on here with y'all and hadn't already been talking to y'all for 30 minutes, I would definitely be blowing my horn. Like, what's up? Why are you going backwards and forward down the street and then you going slow when you get to my house? Like, what's up? I don't like that. Hold on, y'all. Okay, I am so thirsty. Okay, let me go to this next. Um, shout out to all of y'all. I love y'all, man. Y'all, some of the most amazing people. I'm telling you. Okay, by the way, there is this paper that I read about ten years ago that actually discussed the dangers of tolerance. It mentioned that tolerance was really just a step to conform. So it's tolerance versus conformity. Um, but the real goal should be to love each other since each, since, since so much focus is on tolerance. It creates this slippery slope rather than truly unraveling the issues that divides us. So I want to know what you guys think about that comment. I thought that that was very interesting um, because I feel like we may be talking about tolerance on a separate level. Um, there's tolerance when it comes to respecting people's differences, and that tolerance is different. Um, that tolerance is different than a conformity of basically stating that, you know, it's okay to bully or be bullied or just ignore and allow people to, you know, have their opinions. And especially when it's in the light of to protect free speech. But that's a whole nother thing. I won't get into social and political science type shit on you or sociology on you. But I just felt like that was an interesting comment. So listen, if you want the, the opportunity to have your comment read on one of these car chats, just make sure that you're the first one to show up. You know, even if you have an, an opposing opinion to what I'm saying, make sure that you're respectful. That's all I ask. Like... My people are the type of people who think for themselves, and I love that. I love that. I love the fact that I can look at my comments, and people have perspectives that are interesting, that are engaging, that don't always touch on what I believe, but it's different in a way that still it remains respectful. Like, that means a lot to me. So, I like that. Okay, so, give me just a second, y'all. Let me go ahead and, um, okay, so this is Smiles and sg here's another opinion okay i think as the world was moving to be more inclusive in all ways there were people who still held exclusives or discriminatory or derogatory views however they pretended like they were inclusive just to fit in so now the trends are changing People who have been fat phobic, racist, or homophobic all along are now comfortable with sharing it publicly. So basically on what I like, what well, I'm going to say what I like about this, this is not about whether I agree or not, but this is just pointing out what I like about this, uh, this perspective. I'm going to tell you what I like about this is from Smiles and SG. What up? Thank you so much. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for watching. Love you so much. I'm so grateful that you're here. I love these car chat videos again. Listen, y'all, after this conversation that I had with this person that had been doing YouTube for 15 years, I am living the dream. 
I am so grateful for my opportunity and my platform. No matter what happens, it tries to tear it down. I'm going to fight for it. I'm so grateful. And I thank God every day. I don't ever want to come across as feeling like, what's the word? I don't ever want to come across as feeling like I'm not grateful because I am more than grateful. Like, thank you so much to each and every one of you who show up to each one of my videos, whether it's a car chat, whether it's date, selfie dates or dates with Chris or whether it's just who love me and my channel and what it represents. Thank you. I am have been so focused on what I don't have. I really want to focus for the month of November. Y'all know I'm just doing my, my 21 days of positivity, my 21 days of change. I want to do something different every day. I want to be grateful. Um, I feel like gratitude, you guys. Okay? Gratitude is the antidote to grief and sadness. It, just being grateful. I am so grateful. Even for the hurtful things that have been happening. Even for, like, the sad things that happen. Or, the like, friendships ending. Or whatever's happening, right? Life, lifing. I'm still grateful because I'm on this side of life. And I still have the opportunity to make things happen. And I'm just going to say this. A lot of times, we allow hard times and hard things to happen to us instead of allowing those things to happen through us when do hard things y'all like dealing with showing up to you guys even when i'm not my best even when i know that i'm gonna face scrutiny even though i know that like okay i'm in my car i'm not doing my trial hauls you know people are emailing me like you're just if you're just too big to wear a seatbelt or you're just too big to do trial hauls anymore no, I want to be intentional. I want to be purposeful. And to me, I think to use my platform to have these conversations, to me, means the world to me. So, I just wanted to make sure that I am letting you guys know how I don't take this for granted, number one. And number two, how I don't take each and every one of you for granted. Y'all, these little buds going back with some for it. Y'all know me by now. Like, I'm really, like, it's... it's, it's it's really like doing the most. Um, I love y'all. I just want to say that I love y'all and I'm grateful for y'all. Thank you for being a part of my community. Thank you for treating each other with love and respect. And thank you because I feel like we have, we're, we're going somewhere in a special way. And I'm ready to, I'm ready to go there. But I just, I wanted to, to say how grateful I was. Um, but anyway, thank you for putting that there, Smiles, because I think that that's a very interesting, <laughs> come on now, I think that that's a very interesting perspective, um, that you feel like people have been hiding who they really are all along, that nothing has changed, that these people always have been this way. I think that's almost similar to what Mike had to say, because it's like, listen, the darkness was always there. But it just seems like the light, social media have just created a place where now you can see how people are acting. It's like, no, they're not doing anything new. They was always acting like that. They always held these beliefs. They were always feeling this way. But now social media has made it to where now we can see them. Instead of them hiding. Now, I know it's not no mosquitoes during the daytime because if it is, I'm finna go. Now, what is going on? Now, instead of them hiding in plain sight, now these people, because that I, I feel like there's even like a less amount of people who do fake pages. Now, I feel like these are these people's real pages with their real identities. I, I, I can see that. I, I, I respect that perspective. Like, I, I can see that. Y'all get down below in the comments and tell me what you think about what Mike said, what you think about um, everybody who has commented on the last video. And also let me know if you like this where we actually go through. Bitch, I'm 
much. Y'all, I'm finna, I'm finna go. I think that was a um an acorn. I'm sitting under an acorn tree. But anyway, let me know if you guys like this where I delve deep delve into some of the comments, you know, and talk about some of the perspectives. Now let's get. Let me see if I can get Instagram because um some let me see i don't think i can if i can't get it then we gotta go to something else if i can't get the instagram let me see um, i doubt instagram is on here Y'all, it's a lot of stuff flying around in here, and I'm really like, I'm not about it. Oh, nope, I can't get to the Instagram. Okay, next time I'll be prepared, and we'll talk about like what's going on on social media. I wanted to kind of touch bases about this Keith Lee thing and him going to Atlanta. Um, Y'all know that in a lot of my videos, especially when we were at the height of the row row, um, I was traveling and I was showing you guys like what was going on, like what was happening out in the streets. I was going to the Atlanta and I kind of touched bases on some of the experiences that I had while I was in Atlanta. And one particular experience I actually did not share on here, but I shared in Patreon. And that was when I had went to um, Atlanta, went to the Sundial. It was not the restaurant itself. It was the staff, not the staff, I'm sorry. It was the it, people in Atlanta at that particular um, hotel and that particular restaurant. And that kind of set the tone for my trip because I had some really crazy experiences when it came to food. Now, y'all, I'm just going to keep it 100 with y'all. I didn't share all of them with you guys out in the open because I personally felt like me being a fat person, people were going to just say, oh, well, your fat ass didn't need to be outside eating in Atlanta anyway. You needed to be eating a salad. Like, that's what I was thinking. That was my my point of view, like my mindset at the time. Of course, y'all know I still struggle with that, but I'm working through that. So, y'all, please don't put down in the comments. I know y'all, I guess y'all mean well, but it ends up having the adverse, like, it, it has the adverse response. Um, because you guys aren't really listening to the whole video. You're kind of, like, scrolling through it, and you catch something, and you don't hear everything on it. But just, I'm good, y'all. I'm good. I'm working through some of my um my issues that i have but i'm just keeping it i'm keeping it real with you guys like that was something that i was dealing with y'all i cannot <sighs> i don't know if it's a mosquito or what but it's driving me crazy and it's just zoom 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 but anyway but i didn't want to talk about it because i was like you know if i say something about this horrible experience i had I'm pretty sure this is what it's going to be. But that was my personal experience. Then I went back to Atlanta for my birthday. I sent the girls to go get us food. I think I paid for it. Nevertheless, I don't remember. I sent some of the girls to go get us food from this place that our masseuse, because we had a mobile spa come to us when I was in Atlanta for my birthday. Um, now, let me talk about that. Black-owned business. I posted them actually several times black owned business a woman and her partner they came to us they set up champagne they had music they gave us massages mind you all of us i'm probably one of i'm the biggest person in, in the group but no one was probably smaller than 200 pounds all of us were plus size um miss jackie's pretty small um I don't, I don't know her weight she's very small she probably is you know below that but all what i'm trying to say is we're all very like thick girls so traditionally we may feel uncomfortable with going to a masseuse so instead of us all going to a masseuse we paid we went we were in atlanta and we paid 
um to book this mobile masseuse where we had of uh, the masseuse come to us and give us spa treatments we did the yoni steam we did something else with yoni it was like a yoni first of all that hot coochie thing that thing makes your coochie hot i don't know well you have to they put the hot water in and they put the herbs and you sit on it man listen put down below in the comments have you had a yoni steam but it also does work i feel like i'm not gonna get into it because i don't want to be vulgar but if you deal with dryness that a yoni steam is good for you because even like after like for like a couple weeks It was, you know, anyway, the point is I booked with a, a black owned business, most amazing customer service I ever had in my life. And it was in Atlanta. They came to us. They treated me nicely, but I will say the girl, I did not book it. Okay. So one of my friend, one of my, well, somebody else in the group booked it and I'm pretty sure she told them because I always tell the girls don't tell these people who I am for several reasons when we book stuff don't tell them it's because I'm Joy Moore or whatever whatever just in case we act up I don't want them to be like oh this influencer blah 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 just in case they act up I don't want no special treatment I don't want them just treating me a certain kind of way because who they think I am or I don't want them to start asking me for stuff because that happens too and then they'll start oh can you post this and then they'll get mad and make up stuff like y'all would be surprised like some of the petty ass things that happens when you're doing social media like you know what I'm gonna start doing social media uncut and I'm gonna start exposing some of the shit that I've been that I've been going through when it comes to like some of the things that people do because I'm finding that a lot of people do a lot of stuff undercover but they don't want to be uh, uh, like exposed about it. You know what I'm saying? And then they will try to like create a scenario to make it seem like it's you. Y'all, the level of manipulation that happens, like you, you, you know what? You always, let me just tell you what it feels like being an influencer. Being a content creator or being an influencer, sometimes it feels like you're being chased by a bear. When you wake up, you feel like you're being chased by a bear. When you go to sleep, you be you feel like you're... It's like that's the level of anxiety that you have because you're always trying to stay ahead of the curve. You're always trying to make sure that you don't get negative press because look at what's happening to Keith. Like, people are sending him threats and his family threats based off of him doing his job. Like, I cannot believe they're treating him I can't even say they. I can't believe we're treating him this way. Like, I am so sad about that. Like, it really hurts me to see that because I feel like from what I don't know him, I never met him. But from what I know of him, he seems to be such a sweet guy and such a genuine guy. Like, I, I don't see him as being a monster, right? But that's something that will happen when you're on social media is people will try to twist and turn things and make them into something that they're not. So I'm always very apprehensive about, because I've had a lot of the girls come to me and be like, well, why don't you tell them who you are so they can do a discount? No, I want charge me the regular price. Charge me what y'all charge everybody else because I don't want to be on, because it's, it gets very messy. People are very messy. But I'll just say this. When I went to Atlanta, I had an amazing experience for all of the women that I was working with. The lady that did hair, the lady that showed up and did the um, the the cooking. To me, I had a good experience with them. Some of the food was a little, you know, but the, them as people, like my customer service experience was phenomenal. Um, and again, I will admit, the, the ladies that booked it, I didn't book them. It was my birthday. So, because it was my birthday, I didn't have to do anything but show up. On my birthday, I said, hey, I want to go to Atlanta. Somebody who was in the group was like, oh, I got, I, you know, I got you, Joy. No problem. I didn't have to do anything but show up and pay my money for the Airbnb. That's it. The ladies planned 
everything else for that particular birthday. I didn't have to show up. I didn't even have to choose the, the Airbnb. They chose the Airbnb. They chose the location. They said, hey, is this okay? That's how it was, right, for my birthday last year. And so they had um, the lady who came to do to give us the Yoni steam and give us the massages. She recommended, I think, a cake, a cupcake lady or a cake lady for me to get birthday cake and cupcakes. And she also recommended a restaurant. Well, the restaurant that she recommended, I didn't personally want to eat there. I was like, just because she recommends it doesn't mean we have to eat there. But one of the ladies that was in the group was a little pushy. And she was like, well, let's eat there. So, um, because what if she tells her and we don't... Anyway, the point is, I, I sent the, um, Tiffany, I think it was, to go get the food. Tiffany was like, Joy, you will not believe the experience that I had. And I was like, what happened? She was like, the girl tried... First of all, the girl was acting funny. Was They didn't want to take our... They, first of all, they didn't want to take our orders over the phone. Um, Because I think there was, what, 10 of us? There was a lot of us. And they were like, well, we don't want to take the orders over the phone. But, like, as a group. So, what we ended up having to do was... All of the girls had to either go online or call in separately to put their order in. Instead of just doing one big pickup order, I think we all individually had to call our orders in separate. Then, when we went to go pay, the girl ended up saying that the card didn't go through, swept the card like three times, and the card did go through and post each time. So we ended up having to pay cash. Like it was, and they didn't have like good customer service. They was rude, like, and acting like, well, we're, we close in an hour. And then, yeah, and then they called us back. <laughs> they called us back and they was like, well, we close in an hour. Are y'all coming to get this food that you ordered? Well, you never told us that the food was ready. It's like, yeah, we're coming to get it. We didn't know we're from out of town. It was like, but of course, y'all know, we were in a group of people. So it was like, we didn't really care. It was just like, whatever. You know what I mean? But it was really bad. The customer service was really bad. Then when we get the food, food was cold. Food wasn't fresh. Food, they forgot things that we ordered. The food was super expensive. And it was not worth it. And I spent a lot of money on that food. That food was expensive. I mean, for all 10 of us, just imagine. It was probably, I would say, it was a lot. I'm not going to say specifically, but it was a lot of money. And they just weren't nice about it. So, the one of the girls was like, well, are you going to call and complain? And I'm like, no, because what's the point? Like, we're just here for the week. Like, we just know never to eat there again, right? But apparently, y'all know Keith went down there to Atlanta. Everybody is in the uproar about it. However, people are mad at Keith. And it just goes to show, like, this is what I find interesting. Oh, God, that's a dragonfly. I was like, what kind of amphibian is that? <sighs> we got to get us a better spot to sit outside and do these car chats. But <clears throat> it was so interesting. What was interesting to me is the fact that from what I know, it seems like Keith has done so much positive things, like, for black-owned businesses, for small businesses. He even does this thing. Keith does this thing where he'll go into a place, and he'll be like, how much money did you make today? And they'll be like, oh, $2,500, $2,200, $2,700, whatever. And they'll be like... He'll be like, well, I'm going to pay, charge me for whatever you made. I'm going to double it. Like, whatever you made today, I'm going to pay for that double. Especially if the customer service was good, if the food was good, if the restaurant was good, whatever. And nobody really talks about that. Like, you don't see a lot of posts about i mean you see a few but this particular post i think i think let me look up the guy i think his name was something shannon it was with chad ocho cinco hold on a minute this is when i saw it i mean i follow keith lee on tiktok so 
I kind of already knew that it was going to be a mess after he did that milk and honey. Because y'all know the real milk and honey and milk and honey are two separate places. I think one of them, are they were owned by a couple. And then the couple got a divorce. And one of them, you know, they lost the, the, the restaurant in the divorce. Y'all be knowing more of the tea than me. Put it down below in the comments if you know the tea that is Atlanta. If you're in Atlanta and... First of all, here, let me let me get my thoughts together. If you're in Atlanta and you have some, like, first-hand experience with Atlanta food scene, can you put your opinion down below in the comments? Y'all, listen, don't fight people for their opinion. It's just their opinion. It's not Bible. Sometimes it's rude. Sometimes it's disrespectful. But I'm changing. Let the people have their opinion. If it's too raunchy, then somebody gonna block them anyway. But if this ain't honest opinion, let them have their honest opinion. So if you live in or at around the Atlanta area and you have like firsthand experience of the food there, or if you've gone to Atlanta, et cetera, et cetera, put it down below in the comments. Um, this, so especially if you got information about the milk and honey situation, cause I don't know, y'all know I'm just, I'm secondhand information. Secondhand information. But anyway, let me see. Chad. I think this guy's name is something Shannon. I just want y'all to see what I'm talking about. Shannon Sharp. That's his name. Hold on a minute. Sometimes that job, being customer service and being in the food industry, is, is all you can do. I know me. I can't be in the customer service business because I'm easily. I can't. I'm easily irritated. I don't like no book. Hey, I can't. I ordered this and they mess up the order. Okay, I get that, Ocho. But you have to understand, people are paying their hard earned money. So I have the right. If I like the service, I'm going to say I like the service. Now, me, I don't go. Look, Ocho, you know what? In this business, what I've been in, Ocho, I've been very fortunate. I've met a lot of high profile people. Yeah, and one of the first things people ask me is what he or she is like. And you know what I tell them? I can only tell you through my experience. I don't know what they'll be like to you. I don't know what they're like to you. I don't know what they're like to someone else. I can just tell you what they're like to me. When I go to a restaurant, my experience at that restaurant might be different than yours. It might be different than Jordan's. It might be different than Malika's. But I can just tell you from my experience, it was unbelievable. Right. It wasn't very good. The people were courteous. Uh, the, the service was, was lacking. The food was cold. It took me a long time to get seated. It took me a long time for the service to come back and take my order. That's my experience. Right. You might go there and have a totally different experience. Listen, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying, and I'm going to agree to disagree. Okay. I like to leave my mark on all restaurants I go to, regardless of what it is. I am more about being the positive influence. And when I leave those places and leaving my mark, and I don't want my mark to be that of what Brother Keith Lee is doing. Listen, I salute him for what he's doing and trying to um, let the people know about restaurants in Atlanta. The rest of the restaurants that I've been to Atlanta, that I've been to, they've been just fine. Your experience is going to be different. People have said their restaurant has been saved because he's given them a positive critique. So, I just find it so interesting. So, they were having this conversation. It's Shannon Sharp and Chad Johnson. They're having this, this conversation about Keith Lee. And to me, it's like, it goes back to what Mike said. It's about bringing things to the light that otherwise were not to the light. Like, to me, this is very interesting. Because it's like, all of the positive things that Keith Lee has done. Like, I personally have seen him on his channel do some phenomenal things like i asked god to put me in a position where i can pour into people in a way 
then it doesn't jeopardize me. So I've been trying to pour into people, but I've been pouring into people from an empty place. And that's the reason why it's failing. I got to fill myself up so I can pour into people from a full place. Because I'm not doing very good pouring into people right now. So I got to pour into me first. So then I can be in a position to pour into people. But I'm always praying like, God, make me, put me in a place where I can bless people. That's one of my dreams. I really want to do something positive for people. I want to leave a positive mark on people. I want to use my platform to really help people. Yes, I want to help plus size people because I'm passionate about single moms and women and plus size people and even just women who are in different places in life, women who are on different parts of their journey. But I will be honest with you, there is a lot of times where I'm operating from a place of fear. I have operated from the place of fear and I've allowed that I'm going to tell y'all something. I've allowed that to navigate the way that I interact with people out of fear. Y'all know that I had somebody come on my channel about a year ago now into the point of where I had to get a lawyer. That changed my the trajectory of my finances. Me having to get in a lawyer, you guys. Like, shit was serious. Like, I lost money. I lost brand deals. But you know what? God is bringing it all back. It's coming It's coming full circle. But at the time, I had done some really amazing things for people. And all of those things ended up being overshadowed by me being bullied and harassed by this, this guy that came on and harassed me. And, and it really, it was really hurtful for me at the time because I really didn't understand what social media was that actually helped me to understand what really happens with social media but just like mike said not only was it darkness that i went through but it brought the darkness that was there that i didn't know to the light it surfaced a lot because some of the people that were around me at the time i really thought loved me one of the main people who actually went to this guy to petition him to come harass me was someone that I had helped financially. And I was completely blindsided by what they had done to me, right? And so from that happening to me, it put me in this place where I was allowing people to kind of like take advantage of me, talk to me any and every kind of way, treat me in a weird way because I was so afraid. Like, I felt like all it takes is one bad thing someone to come in and say one bad thing about you especially if you are like me i'm just a small creator like i'm just a regular plus size person that already kind of deals with people who have things to say about me and who i am and where i'm from and when you're doing social media full time it these things affect your money even though people say oh just ignore it just ignore it just ignore it it affects you it will affect you and unless you've been in the situation you really can't speak on it because there is that level of toxic tox, toxicity and tolerance where the expectation is that we as creators just tolerate and we don't speak out like Keith is actually speaking out this time this is not the first time that people have tried to turn something that he's doing positively into a negative they've tried to do this before but this is the first time where he's defending himself and people were like he just needs to ignore it why are these people why are they and then but then also y'all know depending on how you look kind of determines how people let you grieve so if you're a more acceptable looking person they allow you to kind of like grieve a little bit better you know what i'm saying when you look like me they'd be like oh you big fat bitch let it go you know what i'm saying i'm just saying they do now but not putting myself in it because i admire keith and i i take a lot from him um on how to handle things because y'all know i was not y'all know i'm like i said earlier i go to war about me because i have so many times been had the expectation of being silenced so i don't like being silenced i want to go to war about what's happening to me and i want to be able to defend myself but because of the energy 
right? But anyway, I feel like I was getting to the place where I was allowing people to treat me in a way contrary than I feel like I deserve, just out of fear of not wanting it to be a spectacle. I didn't want, it's like, listen, give them whatever they want. Like, there's people that work for me. Um, right now, I'm a staff of one, but I'm, I am interviewing people to hire within the new year. So y'all be prayerful for me because I'm going to be trying to hire again. This whole last year, I went, well, no, that's not true. Maybe about the last seven months, I've been without an assistant. I did have an assistant over the summer, which was such a lifesaver. It just saved me so much time. Um, but then I haven't had a... I haven't had an assistant. I haven't had an editor. I haven't had anyone. It's just been me, myself, and I for the last, I know, six to eight months. I, I've been on my own doing everything. And, but again, that's going to change. I'm praying. I'm going to speak it. I'm going to manifest it. God is going to send me an amazing, wonderful editor. God is going to send me an amazing, wonderful moderator for my Patreon. And God is going to send me an assistant, a virtual assistant, and an in-person assistant to help me getting some of these things done. And when I start getting help, y'all are going to see how I'm going to be able to elevate, right? That's a whole nother thing that I'm going to talk about is like how hard it is being someone who looks different with getting the proper help and support that you need. It's hard. But anyway... There was a point where I was allowing people and I was just telling my assistant, like, whatever they want, just give it to them. Give them whatever they want. So that way I could save having to deal with, even if I knew that I was right and I knew that they were doing something wrong to me, I was just letting it go just because I did not want to deal with the backlash and the aggravation and the headache and the possibility of going through something public because y'all it's really really hard and it's really really difficult but I'm coming into my own over this last year I'm not doing that anymore I have been saying how I feel I've been giving my true opinion it's still you know hard, habits are hard to break but I've been giving my true opinion. I've been talking about how I truly feel. And I've been saying, okay, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. I've been saying no more often. Like, I'm getting better about that. And that's that people-pleasing, codependency part of me also. I'm getting better. But y'all put down below in the comments, what do you think about the topics today, about the things that we talked about? Hopefully, you guys got something out of this. I want to, in the future, I want to take this whole car chat thing to the next level. I really want things to get better, maybe more edited, maybe better quality. Like, I want to upgrade our camera. Like, I really want to take our content to the next level because we have spent so much time and so much energy, like, as a black plus size woman to build a community based on not being people not hate watching me but actually providing content and quality it has really been that was a butterfly girl it has really been so like it's been so amazing to be able to do that and i really want to acknowledge what i have done more instead of diminishing or only focusing on the negative um i'm growing i'm learning i'm getting better i'm so excited for where i'm going i love you guys to the moon and bed listen get caught up on your videos i'm like again it's day 10 or 11 i can't remember of my chaotic coochie right now y'all know what that means so some of the videos it's gonna be a lot of car chats it's gonna be a lot of vlogs hopefully we can get into the get ready with me's and the um not only to get ready with me, but I want us to get into the um, styling style with me. I don't know how we're gonna do that, but give me some give me some ideas down below in the comments, y'all. Listen real quick before we go. Y'all know I love me some dossier. I said this yesterday or last night, rather. Dossier was one of the first um companies to support me and to sponsor my content um this particular uh scent let's do a scent of the day 
This is Ambery Vanilla, and I believe this is YSL Black Opium. I'm not 100% sure. Y'all tell me down below in the comments. But um, Ambery Vanilla, I love it. It's a very, very, I don't know. It's like a jasmine, orange blossom, pear, pink pamper, licorice. Um, vanilla and coffee. I love coffee fragrances. Coffee, vanilla, pear. That's me. Um, this is warm, very, very warm, very fall. If you like black opium, you're gonna like this. It is a vanilla fragrance, but it's one of my favorite. I'm gonna make sure that I put in the comments and down below, um, like in the pinned comment and also in the description box. You can buy um from Walmart if you don't want to get it directly from the website. I also have seen it on Amazon um if you want it to come quicker but shout out to dossier for always collaborating with your girl y'all i gotta go it's too much going on but yeah i'm gonna put it put it so y'all can go go get your dossier if you haven't already it's still luxury fragrances just less expensive but um get caught up on your videos and happy joy november i will see you guys tomorrow i'm saying it here on the video because if i say it then it's gonna happen I'll see you tomorrow. Let's try to do daily uploads in November. Let's see how let, y'all hold me accountable. If I haven't posted, y'all better come find me. Um, Cause no matter what, I'm gonna keep posting. So let's see how it works. I love y'all. Let me know what y'all think about the topics today. Let me know um, if you like where um, our car chats have been going. Um, you know, yeah. Now look, y'all see me wipe my face before I got in here, do you? And I'm not going to redo this video. Y'all going to get what you get. I love y'all. <laughs> I'm out.